There are tons of business podcasts to choose from, but only one has the stamp of approval. Kristen Stampini is South Florida's leading real estate entrepreneur and your trusted source for everything real estate. I would like to welcome my listeners and thank you all for joining us tonight for another episode of my podcast, The Stamp of Approval. I'm Kristen Stampini, co-founder of The Stampini Team the Stampini team with Remax Boca Raton, Florida. I'm also a certified real estate coach with Craig Proctor and the owner of Global Virtual Real Estate Assistant. So you can hire me and uh, we find you a real estate assistant. I am a real estate investor and a national trainer and public speaker. Uh, the Stamp of Approval podcast was launched to share and educate other realtors, consumers, and other business owners across North America by sharing value and content to my listeners in each and every episode, as well as share my experiences, my triumphs and failures, and strengths throughout my entire life with the hope of my audience being able to expand their knowledge on everything real estate business, sales, and mindset oriented. Now, remember, you can find me also uh, and like our page on Facebook, The Stamp of Approval. We show you episodes upcoming and, you know, all sorts of hints for you and and good, um, good information. So definitely find us there. Today, I have back Wendy Davis. She is so awesome. Love her to death. Uh, she has, you know, worked with us for many, many years, and I've known her personally for many years. So she is the owner of Wendy Lynn Interior Interiors, which was established back in 2012. It's grown actually now to three associates, along with principal designer Wendy Davis, with whom we have with us here today. So Wendy Lynn Interiors offers staging services for realtors and investors and interior design services for homeowners. She basically works both Broward and Palm Beach County, but it's it's more North Broward. Okay, so we'll get into that a little bit later. And what we're going to talk about today, because everybody was, you know, got a lot of great feedback with, um, with her about how to prepare a uh, home for sale, you know, decluttering and depersonalizing and home repairs on a previous episode that we brought her back again. And today we're going to talk about really the advantages of staging, you know, really what, uh, you know, the quicker sales, the capital gains, you know, just digging a little bit deeper into staging a home, what it takes um, and and take it from there. So welcome, Wendy. Welcome back. Thank you for having me back, Kristen. Yeah, Great to so see you. Yeah. Exciting, you know. Got a lot of really good feedback, you know, from you from you being here the first time. So I thought, you know what, we need to bring her back. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna review some of the things that we talked about on on the episode previously. But um, tell me about like when when people see um, episodes on TV, right? Like home staging, and it, what's the difference? You know, what it, what is it that all about? It kind of. It's helpful because now everybody knows what home staging is. Back in 2012, I had to explain it people to people. They didn't understand or didn't. It wasn't as heavy and it, and it wasn't really well known home staging. So now it's very well known. You know, people call me all the time and they see it on TV. And now, you know, it's known for a seller that they need to stage their house to whatever capacity, small or large. The, the TV shows mislead it a little bit as far as pricing is concerned. So you'll see this great ginormous house that's fully staged. And then at the very bottom, they'll say staging costs $2,000. <laughs> well, that was minus the stager's fee. Okay, so that might just be the furniture. But that might only be for one week or just for the day for them to shoot the staging for that episode. So it's not for a two month term and it's not really all inclusive of like the stager getting paid either. It's just probably like a week or a month term for so, $2,000. Yeah, because they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. They <laughs> definitely be, don't. It could be literally for a week. So when I get those calls and I do break down how much the staging would cost for a vacant or an occupied residence, people are a little shocked um, because the prices aren't what they what say they on, TV. on TV. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like HT or what is it? Um, 
HTV or whatever with 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 Property uh, Brothers, yeah, Property yes, Brothers, and Joanna like Gaines that. and all right. that. Yes, and then they think they're going to get these elaborate renderings of yeah. 3D motion things, and it's you know it's, it's TV, it's TV, <laughs> right? So, do you know about those um, virtual staging where you can pay for it and 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 uh, you know whatever it is? I think it's like 150 or 100 and, or 200 maybe dollars per picture for a realtor to put on the MLS and to market it and things like that. What do you what do you think of that stuff? What I think about that is that yes, it will get the realtor the foot traffic because the images online look great. Like to the naked eye, people can't see that that's a rendering, that those are fake images put into the real room. So when they get to the home, they're excited about it. They're like, oh my God, we saw it beautifully furnished. And then they walk in and it's vacant. The The walls are echoing. They're not getting that emotional connection. So it's kind of misleading deceiving. them and a yeah. little deceiving. Um, so I tell people, instead of investing on that, get it really staged. The people, you know, your buyers, if they're committed, if they have that emotional connection, they'll start sitting on your the furniture and, you know, really kind of in consuming the overall look and the feel. Yeah. So one thing that we talked about on an earlier episode that I thought was really interesting is, you know, you aren't staging every room if it's vacant, right? Usually. Now you can see on TV that, you know, some some investors and things, they do stage every room. Yeah. But I agree that you necessarily don't need it because if it's a, you know, if it's an extra bedroom, people know, hey, can it fit a queen or a king and can they fit, you know, it's just four walls <laughs> pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> Where they want to see is the living area, the eating kitchen, the dining room, and the master bedroom. Those are all where the buyers want to get the warm and fuzzies and see, okay, wow, that dining table is an eight-person dining table. Wonderful. If there was nothing in that dining room, the buyer is going to think the negative. Uh Uh-oh, my eight-person dining table is not going to fit in this space. So you set the tone. People aren't necessarily furniture shopping, although like me as a stager and an interior designer, I still want them to like love everything and see the, you know, beauty of everything. But they're not furniture shopping. They need to see to scale of like what maybe they presently own will fit in a perceivably small area if it's vacant. So do people talk to you like, because one of the things that you do is, is, and we talked about that in an earlier episode, but there's a few different things that you offer. Number one is you can come in and you can just do a walkthrough that takes about an hour, an hour and a half and give people what they really need to do to put their home on the market for sale. Correct? Correct. So it can be staging things, repairs, right? Uh, repairs that they would need to do to, to put their home on the market. Um, do you, do people ask you like, you know, should I redo my bathroom or should I redo my kitchen? Do they ask you things like that? People ask me that all the time. And, you know, as an interior designer as well, I can give them the cold hard, hard facts on how much renovations cost. And if they want to budget that, that's great because kitchens and bathrooms do get the highest return for when you update them. So that investment is going to go a long way, but sometimes people don't have all that extra money floating around or a time. Right. So that's for the realtor's expertise to list it appropriately. That's right. And and the thing is, is if they do do a kitchen, an update of a kitchen, do you know what the return on that usually is? It's generally about 10 to 15%. For the house or for the kitchen? For the kitchen. So okay. if you invest 20000 into that kitchen, then you would get about, I can't do the math, 3000 uh, more. About 3000 more. So by the time, guys, that you really sit there and think about it, okay, $20,000, and if you get, you know, 15% back, and it's, you know, so yeah, you do get a little bit by the time you, but, you know, um, inconvenience, time, and everything else, is it really worth it, you know? I don't know. There could be quick fixes too. It could it necessarily doesn't have to be a whole kitchen remodel, painting the cabinets, just changing out the backsplash. Those are very very low ticket items to What does something like up. that cost? K- painting the kitchen cabinets could be 3000 ish. Again, this is just not really knowing how big the kitchen is, but just let's say on average 3000 so re- to paint. So resurfacing the uh, the Not refacing, but just oh. painting. Okay, so it really depends on how big it is, really. Exactly. The kitchen um, backsplash area, that could be another couple thousand dollars, but give it a whole new look. Okay. 
you don't yeah. really want to change out the granite because right. that's where big ticket items are. But so, what kind of um, colors do you usually recommend for people? Grays are not going out of style anytime soon. White kitchens are not going out of style anytime soon. Um, so I like the light blues, the neutrals, the grays, which is neutral, creams, whites, lighter and brighter. Okay. And uh, one of the things are is when you're coming in and you're recommending different stuff, um, people have different ideas, right? The homeowners? Oh, sure. <laughs> yes, they do. How are you at changing their perception of what really needs to be done? That's where the good cop, bad cop, you know, prior to us actually going live, I was explaining to Kristen that, you know, on a consultation, I'll go in as the bad cop, but tactfully say that this is, you know, a little bit of an outdated look. The buyers now are looking for X, Y, Z. So and then the realtor, you know, is the good cop say, you know, saying what you have is beautiful. But I agree with Wendy that the buyers really are kind of looking at this type of look nowadays. So if you're a realtor out there listening to this right now, think about it. You know, you can be the good cop, she can be the bad cop, you know, and they're going to listen because just like we're the professionals in the real estate, she's a professional and making sure that, you know, that she gets them ready to sell for, for top dollar. Exactly. Right? And uh, and so you look good too because you're bringing her in. You know, think about it. Even if you are not paying for it yourself as a realtor, um, you know, but I mean, for a consultation for a hundred bucks, you might obviously want to do that. I mean, because that's a, a great price price to come in for an hour to to give them things but then you know they can pay for it on top of that or however you you know want to work it out I mean think about that so then you know they can decide on if they want to take it further from that consultation okay do they actually want to add things you know we get as realtors we know we get questions all the time at what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? So as far as like decorating, let's say, you know, you obviously we talked earlier about decluttering and, and depersonalizing and things like that. But you know, what do you put on a table? You like, what do you recommend is, you know, do you do you have centerpieces? Or do you recommend things like that? Yeah, or do you sure. On a dining room table, a nice focal floral arrangement, you know, not necessarily like a whole tablescape with the linens and the rings and the napkins, you know, just less is more. But details specifically where, you know, you want somebody's eye to go is what's nice. So what about a kitchen? Like what do you, because you know, there's always a lot, in, in, in a lot of kitchen, there's so much stuff on the counter. So what do you recommend in a kitchen? Buyers ne obviously know that if it's a, if it's an occupied residence, that kitchen is being utilized. So if you have just simple things like your toaster, your your cutlery, and a fruit bowl, that will go much farther than your paper towels, your your soap pump, your um, you know stack of kitchen utensils, your sandwich makers on there. So just a couple things. Just a couple things. Okay. And how about a bathroom? Bathroom, tidy. A hand towel and maybe an orchid and maybe the the hand soap. That's it. Okay. No then, toothbrush, no soap that's yeah. already been used, like yeah. a soap in a soap dish. Yeah. Okay. And how about like throw rugs and things like that? I don't like throw rugs. Okay. I tell them, obviously, if you're living here and you don't have a showing, use your throw rugs in the bathroom. Right. Before you're showing, tuck them under. And how about in, in the living spaces? How about throw yeah, rugs? Yeah, area rugs tr strategically area rugs. placed. Yeah, okay, okay. So everybody that's out there and listening to this, and you know, we talked a little bit about TV and you know, the uh, reality <laughs> or non-reality of TV. And also we talked about, you know, when you're paying for, as a realtor, when you're paying for, um, you know, pictures to stage a room, you're already putting in 150 bucks or whatever it is, or $100. And like Wendy said, I mean, to actually stage a room is approximately maybe 500 bucks. Okay, so you're not looking at that crazy and now people actually can walk in and feel it. So just think of all the things that we talked about here today and really the advantages of staging and in at least minimal getting a consultation. And even if you're an investor out there or a homeowner and you don't have a realtor or if you are a realtor, you know, 
definitely staging your home or at least getting a consultation of what needs to be done. What needs to be fixed? Because we get asked all the time, hey, what should I do to my home to make it better? So just even paying that $100, okay, to get that um, information for for your customer um, of what they should do to take care of that is huge. You know, we're so much, you know, most realtors don't offer that. So imagine, you know, what, what that in itself is. Um, you know, selling quicker, better capital gains, selling for more money, um, you know, all the things that we talked about, decluttering, depersonalizing, you know, what home repairs. Wendy can help with it all. She has a full team. So Wendy, tell us how they can reach you and what kind of people do you have that actually they work directly for you so they don't have to go out, either realtors or homeowners, and hire additional people besides you, right? Right. I do have a team. Um, I have junior associates, design associates that are trained with interior design um, degrees as well as I am. So we really bring in a, an interior designer's advantage point. Um, people are house blind, you know, they not they don't know what they're looking at anymore. So you're bringing in a fresh pair of eyes that are acting as a future buyer. We're re- wearing a buyer's cap. Um, you can reach us at uh, my phone number. You can call me directly, uh, 561-373-0375. My email address is wendy at wendylinninteriors.com. In what areas do you work, Wendy? We work from West Palm, so up to Jupiter, out to Wellington, as far south as North Broward, so Lighthouse Point area, Deerfield, out to Parkland Coral Springs. Awesome. And then so you do work a little bit of Broward. And basically, you charge $100 an hour. Correct. Correct. And But you also have handymen. Yes. And you also have a warehouse of furniture. Yes. So you can either buy stuff for them, as we talked about in an earlier episode, or they can rent it from you, minimum of two months rental. Correct. Awesome, Wendy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Your thank information you. was amazing again. And I loved having you here. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, listeners. Have a great day. 